Well, we've got some exciting news for any Ubuntu Torch users out there. The Ubuntu Torch OTA 12 has been released, and this is a huge release. Literally months in the making. I believe the last release of Ubuntu Torch was all the way back in October. So, um, as you can see, the UV Ports team, the team currently working on Ubuntu Torch, have put out this article, and it's huge, absolutely huge. Um, as there are, well, a lot of changes in OTA 12. So if we would start at the top, you can see they've kind of announced their OTA 12, and as you can see, even they themselves say what isn't new in Ubuntu Touch uh, OTA 12. Um, as you can see, they've uh, taken down Ubuntu Touch kind of down to its foundation, and they are building back up, which is useful. Um, and they've merged 251 non-translation pull requests in 203 days, which translates to a huge amount of changes. Um, as you can see, you can go onto their GitHub page and see the sort of change log. And the sort of staple, huge, you know, biggest change in this version of Ubuntu Touch is they've updated Unity 8 to 8.20 and Mia to 1.2. Which means um, Unity 8, which is what the sort of, I guess you could say, desktop environment of Ubuntu Touch is, is now in line with the newest version put out by Canonical, um, which brings with it quite a lot of new features. Uh, the biggest new feature, which I'm not exactly a fan of, I have to say, is that the um, home screen or app drawer or whatever you want to call it is now quite different. As you can see, this is what they had originally, and this is what it looks like now. And you can open up an app drawer from the side, which, if I'm to be quite honest, I don't think that's ideal. Um, I think it wastes quite a lot of screen space, because of course here you can see, yeah, all the screen space has been used fairly well. Uh, you know, you can go through all of your apps, but when you open up this you can see that that's a whole lot of wasted space and you have to press another button to get to all of your apps but I suppose it is kind of more polished in a way but eh, I don't know I don't like it but maybe after I use it for a while I'll come round and um, the sort of next change that they've got is they've upgraded Mia 0.24 which was released all the way back in 2005 so it's very old at this point, to Mia 1.2, which release, was released in 2019, which is a huge step up. Um, it even has Wayland support, which is pretty cool. Um, and at some point, they're going to update to Mia 1.8. So uh, all in all, there's a lot of improvements to Unity and Mia, and yeah, I can definitely tell the difference. And what I do notice is that this new update is well, it performs very well, uh, which might even be because of uh, these updates. The next thing that's uh, been added, or rather modified, is the theme. As you can see, it now looks quite different from what it used to. And I've got to say, it really does pop. Um, it's all very contrasty, and everything is quite easy to see. I do think it's a bit of a trade-off, though, because although it's easier to see, I personally don't think it looks as nice, but that's just me. And if we continue forward, you can see that the touch keyboard is improved, and you can now swipe up from the bottom to access what they call the editing overlay, which is where you can move your cursor to wherever you want. Another like quite significant change is improvements to the Morph browser, which is the default web browser included with Ubuntu Touch. Um, and this now has improvements to the private browsing mode. Um, you can delete cookies, which is very important for uh, sort of privacy these days. Uh, apps created with a web app container can now download files, which is quite useful because Ubuntu Touch depends a lot on web apps. Uh, drop down elements are handled more gracefully and there's an automatic fit to width feature um, although unfortunately the Qt web engine used in the web browser is still fairly out of date um, but in the next update it should be updated which is good 
There's also various miscellaneous changes, like, you know, improvements to the charging indicator status, fixes for various devices. Uh, most notably from the miscellaneous improvements, I think, is the kernel driver required for Android has been added by default, which means you can essentially put that onto your... Um, or you can install Android or Anbox on Ubuntu Touch, and what Anbox is, is it's essentially a sort of Android compatibility layer type thing. Or rather, it's more of a virtual machine type thing, I believe. I have tried it, and it's very slow and not usable for much of anything. But if you want to experiment, now you can. And as you can see, a lot more has been added. So... With that said, oh, and also you can go ahead and grab it from your stable channel now, which is good. Um, but with that said, let's move over to the phone and take a look at how everything works on device. And here we have our Ubuntu Touch device. As you can see, the home screen is very, very different from what it once was. Um, if we go into our app menu, yeah, you can see the list of the programs that we have. Oh, camera's blurring out. Yeah, I'm sorry, there's no way to disable or focus on this thing. Um, but as you can see, we have the usual search function, we've got a list of apps, and as I say, I'm really not terribly fond of it. Um, it does waste screen space, I believe, like this is a total waste of screen space. And um, this is more of a waste of screen space than the old app menu was because you can only get three to a row now. Uh, however, I suppose the upside to this is your dock is always on screen and is now more significant. And um, it does look very much cleaner, I will give it that. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's all very new. If we press and hold the power button, it will actually demonstrate that indeed those colors are in fact different um, and if we keep looking around the OS we we can actually go ahead and see if we go into our settings which I don't know if you can see that or not and we go into privacy and permissions you can see that yes in fact you can clear all cookies which is very useful to have um, unfortunately I can't demonstrate uh, the other features like Anbox and stuff because I don't actually have that on device but I can show you the keyboard as you can see, uh, well maybe not because the camera's messing up but as you can see if I swipe up from the bottom yeah I can uh, go ahead and change around where my cursor is which is always a nice feature to have um, another thing I might want to just quickly go ahead and show is if we open up uh, an app as you can see rather frustratingly there is no way to go back to the home screen without uh, closing that app then it will take you back so I'm assuming the assumption is rather just kind of that you won't go back to the home screen um, which I'm not sure how I feel about that but yeah that's pretty much all I've got to show you on device and with that that's pretty much all I have to say for today's video all in all Ubuntu Touch OTA 12 is a fairly controversial update but as a whole I think I'm fairly fond of it. It's uh, definitely a major step up although I'm not terribly fond of the new home screen layout but all the other features are fantastic. So all in all if you're on Ubuntu Touch I would recommend you go ahead and update now because it's definitely worth updating to. But I think that's uh, just about it for today's video. If you liked this video, consider checking out the link in the description to go over to my LBRY page. Uh, if you're already on LBRY, consider leaving me a tip. It really does help out. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.